whether we realize it or not, we are separated from God. There's a barrier between us. The Bible says that that barrier is like a veil. In the same way a veil covers the glory and the beauty of a bride on her wedding day, this barrier, this veil, separates us from the glorious light of God. Sin is that barrier. It's our sin, our pride, it's our selfishness that separated us. And there we were in the dark, lonely and hopeless. But God, rich in mercy and full of love, like a desperate father looking for a runaway child, he came after us. He so desperately wanted that barrier to be broken for that veil to be torn down that whatever the cost, whatever the price, he was willing to pay it. And that price was his son. And his son took the pain and the punishment upon his own back. He allowed the nails of our sin into his hands and into his feet. He hung on a cross, and just like us, he was alone in the darkness. But what seemed to be a shocking defeat was instead the greatest act of love we'd ever seen. Because the moment he died was the same moment that the barrier was destroyed. The veil that separated us from God was at last torn wide open. And when it was all said and done, there was only one name that remained.
That's right, lift your voice. Say, all, all of this for your glory. Whoa. Say, all. Yes, God alone is worthy of all praise and glory on this magnificent day. Our omnipotent and great God deserves all the praise, for it's because of Him and Him alone that we made it to a new year. So we gladly proclaim His name. Thanks, Sandals Worship, for that song of exuberant praise to our God. And thanks to you for tuning in. Welcome. I'm Cheryl Martin, and I've been looking forward to our time together. It's a tradition for Excellent Living to host an event to jumpstart the new year God's way with a theme to set your course. This year, it's Destiny Habits. I'll share more in a few minutes, but first, another song from Sandals Worship, there is nothing that our God can't do. Just one word, you calm the storm that surrounds me. With just one word, the darkness has to retreat. Just one touch, I feel the presence of heaven. With just one touch, my eyes were open to see, my heart can't help but believe. There's nothing that God can't do, there's not a mountain that He can move. Hope oh, is the name that makes the
There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all agree. A new year usually motivates us at least for a few days to develop new habits. We know we could be better and do better if we were more disciplined, focused, and action-oriented. After all, the goal is to be the best we can be. Now, setting goals and developing habits to increase income, marketability, improve our relationships, golf games, or grow our business, all admirable. I know I love reading articles and books and videos about high-ranking achievers and what they did to get to the top of their game. But during our time together, I want to challenge you and me to commit to a higher calling, what I call intentionally pursuing destiny habits. Destiny habits, practices, or consistent behavior that will propel you to, into God's best. The distinct blueprint God designed for you before the foundation of the world, before you were conceived in your mother's womb. There is no higher purpose in life fulfilling that destiny. So I've identified seven destiny habits that will keep you on track for fulfilling that calling. These habits count not only in this life, but for the next. The first one is live for an audience of one. Live for an audience of one. There are probably a lot of people in projects vying for your attention, not to mention your own to-do list or wish list. You can be overwhelmed at times, I'm sure, about this list and what do you tackle first. You may feel overwhelmed being pulled in many directions. What do you do? Well, this destiny habit will help clarify and bring clarity because we have just enough time to please God. He ensures that whatever He's called us to do, we have the time to do it. I like to think of God as the director, the director of our lives. Think of the movie director. It doesn't matter how talented the actors are or how many Oscars 
they have won? It's the director who calls the shots. They don't write the script. They are there to execute the script in the best possible way. They are there to give it their best. Everyone on the set submits to the director's vision for the movie. Well, this destiny habit, living for an audience of one, requires that same singular focus of executing the blueprint for our director. What this means is that we wake up every day with our number one goal of pleasing him and him alone. This will clear the fog in our lives. If we know that that's what life is all about, it simplifies life. We don't have to write the script. It's already been written because Ecclesiastes 6.10 says, everything has already been decided. It was known long ago what each person would be, so there's no use arguing with God about your destiny. So this means we gladly submit to the role the director has already assigned us. Now, it may be a main character in life with great responsibility, or a supporting role, or an extra, which means we go through life without being famous, but faithful to our director's call. What's wonderful about this is, is that when we obey our director, God, we can get the same top commendation from him, no matter our role, because he was the one who gave us the assignment and we obeyed. So number one, live for an audience of one. Make pleasing God your number one pursuit. It's a must if you want to fulfill your God-given destiny. You know, Jesus modeled this. He said in John 8, 29, I always do what pleases him, his father. John 10, 32, at my father's direction, I have done many good works. And on the way to the cross, Jesus prayed to the father. I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. So we see that Jesus, who was equal with God, was consumed with one thing every day. Not his to-do list, not his agenda, his dreams of making it big, but only doing the will of his Father. Question, what are you consumed with? every day. Your to-do list? Do you constantly check in with God and ask, what do you want on my agenda? Are you pleased with my priorities? Are they in sync with yours? Am I pursuing your plan for my life or mine? Your dreams for my life or mine? This is a great day to start asking these questions. As you think about this destiny habit, number one, you may say, Cheryl, I'll be honest with you. I'm afraid that if I live for an audience of one, I'm not going to reach the level of success I dream of. I'm not going to make the amount of money I dream of making. May I share something with you? The God we serve is the God who orchestrates good success. And when we make the main thing, the main thing, we will reach the level of success that he ordained for us before the foundation of the world and it will not go bad. The word of God is full of people who lived for an audience of one. Daniel and his three friends and our great God came through for them every single time. I can assure you, you will never regret living for an audience of one. 
our God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. And he delights in giving his children good gifts. In order to please God, Jesus made it very clear what is required. He said in Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven, 37, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. This is an all-consuming love. It's an intoxicating love. This is where you can't get him out of your mind. And when you love God this way, you don't want to do anything that would displease him or dishonor him. That's why it makes our life choices very easy when we live for an audience of one and we love God completely and wholly because we know what the answer is and how we are to proceed. It all comes down to, I am going to do what pleases the Father. So make it your business to live for an audience of one. The second destiny habit is take self off the throne. Take self off the throne. We live in a me culture. Have you noticed? It's all about me taking selfies. What will make me happy? I must live my truth. Look at me, admire me. That attitude, let me assure you, will not get you to the destiny God ordained for you. You will crash. Jesus said in Matthew 16, 24 through 26, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but lose your own soul? Is anything worth more than your soul? This is not a one-time transaction taking self off the throne. It's daily. Every day, self wants to be in control, wants to have its way. I know self is strong-willed, but daily we have to say, Lord, I put you on the throne of my life. You are the one calling the shots of my life. I say yes to your will. You know what's best for me. That's what Jesus did. He was equal with God. In that same chapter, verse 21, Jesus told his disciples, it was necessary for him to suffer many terrible things at the hands of religious folks. He told them he would be killed. That was his destiny. But on the third day, he would be raised from the dead. He didn't abort his calling. Jesus was willing to die on the cross, deny self so we could be saved from our sins and experience new life in him. It was not about him, but about the will of his Father. So I encourage you to daily take self off the throne. Destiny habit number three, stay steeped in God's grace flowing in and out. Stay steeped in God's grace flowing in and out. Daily immerse yourself, saturate yourself, never forget about God's extravagant grace in our lives. It's that grace that saved us. There is no good thing in us. It's only the grace of God that has saved us. We are getting into heaven based on Jesus's track record, what he did on the cross, not ours. In Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9, they say, God saved you by his grace when you believed. 
And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it. It is so important to remember that we are steeped in God's grace when we miss the mark because there are times we will and we want to get depressed about it and want to throw in the towel. But that's when I remember what Philippians 1, 6 says. It says, the God, I'm certain that God who began the good work with you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. Isn't that great news that whatever God starts, he finishes, he is committed to us being the masterpieces that he created us to be so we can do the good works that he ordained for us to do. So by God's grace, we are who we are, whatever we are, whatever we have accomplished. We can't boast about that either. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, 10, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. When we stay steeped in God's grace, there is absolutely no room in the teacup for pride. I say to myself on a regular basis, all that I am, any ability that I have, my career, credentials, opportunities, all these things have nothing to do with me. They are all because of God. I can't boast about anything as it relates to Cheryl, but I can always brag about God. The amazing doors that he's opened and his imprint on my life. This is the same attitude that David had when he became king. He said this in 2 Samuel 7, 18, when God took him from being a lowly shepherd to being the king of Israel. David sat before the Lord and prayed, Who am I, O sovereign Lord? And what is my family that you have brought me this far? He went on to say, O sovereign Lord, there is no one like you. I am your servant. May your name be honored forever. Did you notice David wanted God's name to be honored forever, not his? So God's grace should always be flowing to the brim in our cup so it flows out to others especially to our brothers and sisters in Christ, when we allow them, we give them the grace to be the person that God has called him or her to be. We give them grace to operate in their giftings, their personality. We give them the freedom to pursue God's calling on their lives. It will be different from his calling on our lives. They may not share our opinions on non-essential matters or gray areas, but we extend them God's grace to be who they are. So stay steeped in God's grace, flowing in and out. Destiny habit number four, renew your mind daily. Renew your mind daily. The battle is always in the mind. Our minds are bombarded with the latest gadgets, news, gossip. It's all on social media. And we can be consumed with checking social media constantly throughout the day. But to reach our destiny, it's important to check on God's thoughts and to retrain our minds to focus on what God says is important. And he tells us that in Colossians 3, 1 and 2. Those verses say, since you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above, 
where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. So how do we do this? By choosing to meditate on God's Word, memorizing it and obeying it, choosing to pray throughout the day, choosing to praise God, to confess our sins, making our minds think what God thinks, thinking on those things that are true, honorable, right, pure, lovely, admirable, praiseworthy, excellent. Choosing to put our minds on the omnipotent one, the all-knowing one who's never surprised about what's going on down here on earth. Resting in the fact that nothing or no one can thwart his purposes. You know what? It calls for God's grace and practice to resist all of these distractions, all of the thoughts that come into our minds. I find that when I do this, it calms me because I'm choosing to focus on what honors Christ rather than all these things that I cannot control, that I am not in charge of. So renew your mind daily. Destiny habit number five, build a strong faith in God. Build strong faith in God. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says, we walk by faith, not by sight. You know, the Bible is filled with so many stories of those who chose to live by faith and not by their feelings or by their circumstances. These patriarchs chose to believe God and obey what God said. They expected God to keep his promises, even though their situation looked improbable. That's what faith is. It's believing that God is who he says he is and that he will do what he says he can do, no matter the odds. And that he's a God who always keeps his promises and that it's impossible for him to lie. That's how Noah fulfilled his destiny. Abraham, Sarah, Daniel, and the others listed in the hall of faith in Hebrews 11. So how do we build this strong faith? Well, Romans 10, 17 tells us faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So the more of God's word we feed on, our faith increases. It is our super protein food for faith, the word of God. You see, God wants us to have our own God stories of Him proving Himself mighty in our lives. I know I have my own God stories and I want more. This is what God desires for all of us because He loves it when we exhibit this kind of confidence and we stand on His Word and we say, God, you have not changed, no matter how impossible my situation appears to be. I am standing on your word. That kind of faith pleases God. Destiny habit number six, tell your great love story to others and tell it often. You know what? I love love stories. I love reading them, watching them, talking about them. They make me smile. And whenever I run into couples, a lot of times I will say, how? I will ask the question, how did you meet? Well, if you have a relationship with Almighty God and with His Son, Jesus Christ, you possess the greatest love story ever that God himself would dispatch his only son to die on the cross for our sins, when we were unlovely, when there was nothing that we could do to stop from sinning, 
we were on our way to hell and he did this great thing for us. He loves us unconditionally. There is nothing that we can do to ever stop God from loving us. He promised to never leave us or forsake us. No one can match his love. And so what are we to do? Tell this great love story with gusto often. The person may not like it, but they cannot refute it because it's our story of a changed life. We draw others to Christ when we are thrilled about this relationship with Jesus Christ. So tell your great love story often. The final destiny habit I'll share with you is look for ways to be kind and then be kind. The world can be cruel at times. The crime rate is up. There are carjackings, road rage and rudeness. But the God we serve wants his children to practice kindness. My example again in this arena is King David. There is a story in 2 Samuel chapter 9. One day David asked, Is anyone still alive from Saul's family? If so, I want to show God's kindness to them. Now, King Saul had been his nemesis. David had done him no wrong, but Saul, filled with jealousy and rage, had a bounty on David's head. He attempted to kill him numerous times. Now, David, he only spoke well of Saul. He had the opportunity to kill him and didn't do it. God took care of his enemy and made good on his promise to make David king. So the answer to David's question came back. There is one Saul's grandson, son of Jonathan, but he's crippled in both feet. In other words, he's disabled. Do you really want to show kindness to him? What will you get out of this deal? His name was Mephibosheth. When they met, David told him, I intend to show kindness to you because of my promise to your father. I'm going to give you all the property that once belonged to your grandfather Saul, and you will eat with me at the king's table. What overwhelming, undeserved kindness David showed to his enemy's grandson. Our great God calls us to do the same, to look for ways to be kind to those who can't do anything for us, the marginalized, to be kind to those who betrayed us, berated us, who took advantage of us, to show kindness of them, to show kindness to them in secret. We show kindness to them, but we also speak kindly of them and to them. We focus on what's good about them and keep what's bad about them secret. Someone said we are most like God when we are kind. I've highlighted seven destiny habits. The first one is live for an audience of one. Take self off the throne, stay steeped in God's grace, flowing in and out, renew your mind daily, build strong faith in God, tell your great love story often, and look for ways to be kind, then be kind. I encourage you to put them into action immediately and make them a priority. Review them often, and as you spend time talking to God and reading His Word, expect Him to reveal His specific destiny for you. He may expand your list with more habits. 
he wants you to incorporate. That's what top achievers do. They are constantly honing and tweaking their regimen for peak performance. These seven will get you started. Excellent Living has created a free resource for you that includes not only the seven destiny habits, but also destiny declarations you can recite and meditate on regularly. Destiny verses to memorize and questions to review. To get your free PDF, just send an email to info at excellentliving.org. That's info at excellentliving.org. Put the word destiny in your subject line and we will email it to you. It's our joy to do so. May I pray for you today? Maybe you have never accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. This is the best day to do so. Just repeat this prayer with me. Dear God, I thank you that you love me. I thank you that you sent Jesus to save me, not condemn me. I admit I need him and want him as my Savior. Today I ask Jesus into my heart for a relationship with him. I want to follow you and do the things you tell me to do. I ask you to save me from my sins, my habits, and my hang-ups. Save me for your purposes right now. I accept your free gift of salvation. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You are now in the family of God. Your past is forgiven. Your slate clean by the blood of Jesus. To learn more about your new life in Christ, all you have to do is send us an email at info at excellentliving.org. We'll send you resources. Now, if you've already made that commitment to Christ, here is my prayer for us. Lord, help us to stay the course and not lose sight of the habits that lead to your God-given destiny. Give us the grace and strength to follow you wholeheartedly and uncompromisingly. Let us not allow the cares of the culture to distract us and depress us. Instead, let us be single-minded about pursuing your destiny, all for your glory. Amen. I ask you to share this link of this presentation with others so they can be encouraged with the content. To close us out, Sandals Worship will sing our benediction. Let it bless you. During this song, I encourage you to worship God. Reaffirm your love for Him right where you are and your commitment to activate these seven destiny habits. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you have a great year of thriving in God's destiny.
thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children Sing Amen. 